Soils are the basis of all healthy productive systems and they're also the basis upon the ecosystems in which we all live, work and play. Today I'm with Dr Ivana Oliver from the University of New England just outside of Armadale and we're having a look at some basic things that everyone can do to understand their soils better, manage them better and achieve sustainable production outcomes. <laughs> we're going to go out for a walk through the environment. We're going to cover about 300 metres laterally and we're going to go up about 30, 35 metres in elevation and we're going to see, what, five different sites where the soil changes dramatically. Yeah, I've got five stops that I want to show you today, Tim. And so we're going to look at a topographic sequence of how soil changes as we move from the lower parts of the landscape up until the top and then also some of the management stuff and changes that we see along that topographic sequence as well and how they're impacting our, our soils and how we manage them. So by the end of this video, you should be able to understand how to assess your soils a little bit better you should be able to understand how they change across an environment, what are some of the clues that you can look for, and then you should be able to get an idea of some of the management implications that different soil types provide people that are managing the land. Ivana, I can't wait. Let's get into soil. Let's go, Tim. So we're here down in the creek line, and we're at the bottom of effectively this topographic sequence. And this kind of environment that we see here, we're actually in an in a depositional type of environment. And so that basically means we've got material that's being eroded from upslope and it's being transported through the network of the, in this case, the river system, and then it's being deposited here. As a consequence of all that deposition of material, our soil type is very, very different compared to what we're gonna see later on upslope. So here, what we've got is a soil profile that looks very consistent and it's very even throughout. But the main difference that we have between say this portion at the top and the bit down the bottom is we've got a slight colour change. It's just ever so slightly darker, a little bit greyer compared to this stuff underneath. The big reason for this change in colour is purely down to the presence of more organic matter at the surface. We can see that with the grass growing on top compared to what we've got down underneath. So we're gonna call this our surface or topsoil horizon. But then underneath that, we've hardly got any sort of soil development. And when we're talking soil development, we're looking for things like color, changes in texture, structure, but it is all very consistent. And so in terms of horizons and, and soil types, it's very much a continuation of what we've already got at the surface. If I get my squirty bottle and sort of squirt it up, you can like, you can see that it goes slightly darker and it shows the colors distinction between our, our surface and our underneath quite well. Given the fact that we've got quite a lack of soil development, a little bit up here, it's basically rudimentary in terms of its nature of development. And so we call this in terms of a classification, a ruder soil. If you're seeing something in a soil like this, for managing it, best thing to do is very little. So you're not gonna come through with your machinery and dig it up because it is quite a fragile soil. You can see it's got lots of these rocks in it and that's the depositional material coming down. It's kinda sort of sandy, silty in nature of its texture. So it doesn't actually have a lot of body or substance to it. And so it's not gonna have a lot of nutrient value either. So in terms of, of managing it, best thing we can do is leave it in place, maybe do a bit of a light graze to maintain some of the plant species for fire control and that kind of stuff on the surface. But from a soil's perspective, best left in place. So we've come to our second stop in this topographic sequence. And here we've moved up the creek and we've moved uphill. So compared to our first stop where we were at the bottom of the creek, we've moved up about 100, 200 metres along the creek, but only about five to 10 metres worth of elevation gain. And so here we have a completely different soil type. What we're looking at here is we've got very distinct horizons, which is completely different to the, the stop number one. Here we have our topsoil horizon and just below, it extends just below this roots here. But the cool thing about this site is underneath, at about that 40, 50 centimetre mark, we're getting the development of colour. We also get an increase in, in texture, so our clay increase, percentage increases a fair bit. And so as a consequence, 
we're getting more horizon development and the development of a subsoil horizon. We've still got the influence of our rocks, you can see them, and that's still because we're in an environment where these are being transported in from upslope erosion. The environment given where got material coming in from the erosion upslope, but then we're still losing some material further down the creek. So here we're in a transportational or a transitional kind of environment when it comes to soil material movement. Another thing at this site that we um, pay particular attention to is given the horizon just in here, it's quite light in colour, and if we look around the site, there's evidences of, of erosion and particularly sodicity. And it, if you've got sodicity in your soil, it's one of the things that you have to really test for and, and manage well or leave in situ. You don't want to disturb if you've got a sodicity problem. In terms of land use and management for this site, a light graze, it's probably got capacity to handle slightly heavier graze in terms of the soil itself is a little bit more robust but still reasonably fragile, just not as fragile as further down the creek line. But grazing land is the best use for this particular soil type. We're now here at stop number three and we've moved upslope along the road and we're more at a crest type of environment in this particular location. This location, being at the top of the hill, is an erosional environment. So basically all the material from here gets eroded and it gets washed downhill back down to stop number two and one and where it's deposited down there. In this particular soil type, what we're seeing is we've got our, our surface horizon it was quite rocky and then once again we've got our development of our subsoil horizon. This time it's a lot more orange, there's a lot more colour to it, so it's basically telling us that the iron in the soil has been exposed to more oxygen and for a longer time period. So we can use the mineralogy of our soils and the type that they are, the mineral type, as clues to potentially how long these soils have been in formation. The other key thing at this site is actually the history of this site. And here, being in an erosional environment, this particular paddock behind me was once fairly heavily grazed. And as a consequence, there was no ground cover left. Because there was no ground cover, it was very easily for the topsoil to be eroded away from this site. The trees that you see behind me are an attempt to rehabilitate the site and we're slowly but surely getting some of our organic matter back in the soil, but the damage has already been done. And if we actually look at this particular soil profile, we can see that we've got this really light colored stony gravelly layer, which we had down in stop number two, but in stop number two above it, we had this much topsoil. Here, all that topsoil has been lost and we're just left with the, the stony layer and then the subsoil layer underneath. So this is a classic example of why maintaining our ground cover is really important to our soil health and our functionality of our health, but just protecting the resource we have. If we lose our soil, it takes a very, very long time to get it back. On average, it takes about 100 years to develop one centimetre of soil. If we have an erosion event, we can lose in some cases, 10, 20, 30 centimetres in a single time period. So we've effectively lost maybe 100 or three or 400 years worth of soil development and our productivity. So key at this site, maintain the ground cover you've got, do your best to work with the environment you have and protect our soils. In terms of management and future uses, the best thing we can do is very, very light grazing so that we maintain our organic matter and our ground cover resources. If we lose the ground cover, we're gonna have more continued erosion. So we've reached stop number four in our topographic sequence, and we've come up now about 30 meters in elevation compared to the creek line where we were at stop number one. And we can see that this particular soil profile probably looks very similar to what we saw at stop number three. But here, we've got our A horizons being maintained. Then underneath, we have our subsoil horizon. And then down below, even further, we have our rock 
which we call our sea or our parent material as it's weathering and it's what's actually forming the basis of the soil that we see here. One of the cool things about this particular location is what's happening behind me. We've got all these trees and they woodlands and these trees and the woodland environment provides lots and lots of organic matter inputs into this system. And so as a consequence, it's helping to maintain our A horizon because we've got that ground cover so we don't have the er same erosion pressures. But if we actually go further back into the woodland, we've got all these sticks, twigs, leaves, we've got lots of roots. So we've got the development or the beginnings of an O horizon, so an organic based horizon in this particular soil. It's a bit hard to see here, just in this road cutting face, but if we go further back, there's all this litter on the surface. So in this system, we actually have a high amount of organic carbon. So organic matter is this stuff, and it's a combination of carbon, nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus, and all other minerals and elements that we have. It is really crucial for helping to maintain our water infiltration, our water holding capacity, the nutrient availability of our soils. And so organic matter is a really rich source of minerals and nutrients that we can use to help maintain the function of our soils and provide with our productivity. For land use at this particular site, the fact that we've got the woodland, it provides great habitat and environment for a lot of our, our critters and our bio soil biology. So we're helping to maintain our, our ecosystem services and our biodiversity in this particular landscape and environment. In terms of management of this site, Woodland is the best thing to do, but if we're looking at a productive agricultural capacity, again, grazing, but this time with short, sharp bursts, just to remove some of that litter, some of that nutrition that the our stock can get, but to help fully maintain our ground cover and the health of the ecosystem, both in the soil and the above ground plant with the wood, the trees and the grasses. So we're here at our very last stop and we've continued to climb up the ridge line and up the hill. And here, the main stark difference compared to what we've just looked at is the color. Here, we're on a much more of a browny, reddy kind of color soil. And that is down to one thing in particular. Here, we've had a change of parent material. So that source material that our soil has been formed from. This particular location, we're on a basalt derived soil. One of the cool things about the Armadale region is where we see our basalt ridge lines and our basalt caps, they were, are a result of Mount Ebor volcano erupting and all the lava that flowed out of that volcano, finding the path of least resistance, which was downhill. And at the bottom of our hills and valleys, we had river systems. The lava flowed into those river systems and then over many geological time periods since that time, we've had erosion of the surrounding meta sediments. The surrounding meta sediments are much, soft, much softer than the basalt, and so as a consequence, they've eroded away at a faster rate compared to the basalt. So, what we're seeing in our landscape today is a lot of the ridge lines have a basalt cap on top, and as a consequence, Underneath that one, you will see the river gravels, and then underneath the river gravels, you will see the earlier metasediment material. So here in this Armadale environment, we see an inverted landscape. Basically, what once was the low points, the riverbreds, is now the high points, because the basalt weathers at a slightly slower rate than the surrounding metasediments. For this particular soil type here, because we've got the change in parent material and we're now on that basalt derived soils, we see a, lot, a huge difference in the colour. We also see difference in the texture of the soil. And as a consequence, we can use and manage the soil differently. So when we're looking at the colour and texture, we can see here we've got that sort of reddish brown. And then when we look at the texture, we have more clay content throughout the soil. A lot of the other sites, they were much more sandier at the surface, whereas here we've got gradual increases in the clay content as we get deeper into the soil profile. Because the basalt itself contains a lot more minerals and inherently higher in its nutrition and its fertility, these soils are actually one of our most productive soils in this region. Our climate often drives many of our factors and we still graze them, but, often, but you also see where you have these 
basalt cap derived soils, they're our more highly productive grazing areas. If we head out further east towards Dorigo, down towards the coast, you'll see some of these types of basalt derived soils uh, used for potatoes and particularly our dairy industry. Productive capacity is higher in these type of soils compared to the meta sediment derived soils that we've seen earlier today. So if you're looking at these soils, how to manage them, again, it's all about ground cover. You want to maintain your ground cover, but you have a lot more tools in your toolbox around land uses and productive systems that you can use. So we talked about potatoes and the dairy, high value grazing. And if it wasn't for our climate here in Armadale, you would see some of these soils being used for cropping as well. It's too cold for cropping up here. Well, Ivana, here we are back at the end again. The grand tour of soils is finished. Isn't it amazing how much soils change in only a few metres of travel? Oh, it's just it's absolutely fascinating. And to see those changes happen so quickly, and it's just the subtle little changes in the landscape can completely change your soils. And the big thing that I got out of this was the inverted landscape. It just absolutely blew my mind. We see things in the time scale of our own lifetime. And to think that when we're looking at ridge caps that have got basalt on them, we're actually looking at old riverbeds and where we're standing used to be the mountain that fed that river and we're in the gully now. It just brings into frame how small and insignificant our lifespan is compared to the earth. Oh, totally. It's just, it blows your mind about how to conceptualize what's happened millions and millions of years ago, or even hundreds of millions of years ago, and then relate that back to what we're seeing at where we stand in this location today. And doesn't it ram home the point that what we're playing with now and what we're potentially damaging or potentially improving is something that's taken hundreds of millions of years to get here so we better value it. Oh, totally. Soils is the most valuable resource that we have on this planet Earth. Without our soil, we can't grow our grass, we can't feed our cows, we can't feed ourselves. If we don't look after our soils, we're going to be in big trouble. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to be out with a really well-respected soils lecturer from one of the best ag universities in Australia. So, Ivana, thank you very much for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been all my pleasure, Tim, and it's been great to show you around. Guys, if you like this kind of content, don't forget, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. It really does help the channel. There's plenty more on timthompson.ag. I'll see you next week.